The entire team at the Emsolation Podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians and cultures of the lands and seas on which we live and work. We pay our respects to all First Nations peoples, elders and ancestors. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and stand in solidarity towards a shared future. I personally want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I record this podcast every week, the Wurundjeri people. I recognise their continued connection to the land and waters of this beautiful place I call home. Always was, always will be. This is the Emsolation Summer Series. I love chaos. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Where I thrive. With Melissa Leong. I'm sending you a keyboard ah. for Christmas. No, <laughs> I am sending you a keyboard for Christmas. Bring on my oh list. Oh my goodness. Put it on the list. In Rossiano with Melissa Leong for the Emsolation Summer Series. Hello and welcome to the Emsolation Summer Series. It's a bunch of in-conversations that I'm having with people I think are super interesting and I know will impart lovely power and wisdom to you all during your summer break. Today's guest is a firm Emsolation favourite. I cannot stress this enough. We have dedicated entire episodes to the way that she tastes food. Is that giving it away? She is truly extraordinary. She is a pianist. She's going to laugh as she listens to this. She was on track to going to a conservatorium of music. She was such a good pianist. She was an athlete. She still probably is. I don't know. Maybe she is still an athlete. We didn't get to that. She's got multiple degrees from multiple universities. You'll know her best in her role on MasterChef. It is the one and only Melissa Leung. I'm going to give her a clap. Put my pen down on my plate. Only the most professional things go on here. <laughs> this chat was extraordinary. I knew the kind of the moment I got a sense of Mel that she was my people. And look, you guys know I don't say that often. She's our people. She's good people. She's a fully formed, raw, emotional, intelligent, authentic human, genuinely trying to do her best in the world and make other people feel less alone and You'll notice there's a bit of a theme in the guests that I have on and I very deliberately picked them also because their life's work does revolve around making people feel like they belong and it's something we all crave, I think. So I'm not going to chat for too long because I want to get straight to this. It's It was a great, amazing, I walked away just, just feeling like I'm glad she's out there in the world doing her thing. I think it's wonderful. She is wonderful. You're going to love this. So I'll get straight to it. Emsolator's friends, the incomparable, the incredible Melissa Leon. You're listening to the Emsolation Summer Series. Melissa Leon, welcome. Welcome to the Emsolation Conversation Summer Series. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be here. Oh my God. <laughs> we have been wanting to have you on. Long time listeners of Emsolation know that. Like we have a Christmas special coming up and your picture's on the wall because we have an obsession wall. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. It's, yeah. It's, That's you, creepy. Yeah. It's lovely at the same it's, time. You've totally understood the brief. It's super <laughs> creepy. Like Michael and I, I think, dedicated a whole episode once to the way you taste food. I told you that. You did. You mm. did. Um, mm. Thanks. <laughs> oh, God, I love you so much. This is just, this series is, it's an eclectic group of people I've picked. Just people that I think are really interesting and amazing and have a unique perspective on the world because I want everyone to walk away having learned something new about the people because you're all very well known and to feel less alone because all of you have had your own kind of journeys with certain things. You all have something to offer, you especially. So the first thing I'm asking all my guests, and this is the only structured question, the rest will just be free-flowing fucking chaos. How I love you- chaos. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Where I thrive. But let's start with the structure. I, I'm recently diagnosed ADHD with autism. And so I have started advocating for myself and introducing myself as such. Hi, my name is Em. I have ADHD and autism. I might forget some of the things you say to me. 
I might say something weird in the middle of a sentence. You may have to email me facts, but I'm really trying my best and I don't mean to offend you and I'm a good yeah. person. Yeah. So how would you? You are a good person. Ah. Uh, I think I am. Oh, you really are. You really are. But it is, it is really, I think it's a, I think it's a really, it takes a really bold person to put it out there and say, hey, this is who I am up front and this is how I need to navigate the world. I hope that's okay with you. Mm. And you, you hope that most people will meet you with compassion and, and with their own vulnerabilities. Yes. Um, but you never know because the world is a crazy place. Full of cunts. So, <laughs> so how would you introduce yourself honestly? Like if you were being brave, what would you say? Okay. Hello, my name is Melissa Leong. I have a very loud inner monologue and... <laughs> Quite often I will be having more than one conversation with myself while having a conversation with you, which perfectly sets me up for television, but not for much else. Um, <laughs> I will walk away from know? this conversation and overthink it for five days. Oh, totally. I mean, case in point, two days ago oh at work, yes. we had quite the eating challenge. Of course, every day at work is an eating challenge, but I don't, cope so well with certain types of foods like in excessive amounts mm -hmm. and I ate too much bread and too much dairy in one day it was an amazing challenge oh. you will laugh when you see it it, oh it was God. just it was so I had the best time oh, great. but towards the end yeah. of that particular segment that we were doing I was drunk on bread and cheese just <laughs> oh drunk <laughs> Absolutely yep. drunk. The you know that that weird foggy lens that comes down. I did not know what I was saying. <laughs> I it just and then Jock turned to me and asked me quite an important question about a significant dish in my life. Mm. Oh, and I turned around to him and I won't tell you what it is because it'll <laughs> it'll spoil it. But I just I just blabbed out a dish and a time in my life. And afterwards, I went home and I just went. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why? What? <And> I, just, <laughs> oh, I had to email post and say, look, can we re can we redo that answer? Because that was the dumbest thing that has ever escaped my earth. And you know when you can see the yeah. words clawing their way oh, yeah. out of your mouth and yeah. you just want to cram them back in yep, and day. they won't go. That was that day. And then of course yesterday, because Jock and Andy and our executive producer, Dave, know and love me a lot and I know and love them a lot. Our thing is that we give each other shit. And so, yeah, so the day started with, so tell me a bit more about that dish again. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but They're wonderful people, so they also shared their vulnerability of things that embarrassed them too and then we could all joke and laugh about it together. But, yeah, I'm still mortified. Oh no, I love that. still mortified. No, yeah. Because we all yeah. do it. I mean, also, I know that I attract an audience of people that struggle with small talk, and it's amazing how many neurodiverse people did just find me. They like mm. and assumed I already was too. Mm. So I I immediately gravitated towards you because I sensed a fellow like first generation daughter to immigrants, was the only one of her kind at school, overachieving. Yeah music, academia, sport, like wanting to prove herself constantly exhausted people pleaser. And I saw you and I surmised <laughs> all that. I was like, we're the same. I see. Exhausted I people pleaser yeah. is so on point. That mm. is exactly what it is yeah, a right. lot of the time. Um, but I think as I get older, certainly in my case, um, I am learning how important boundaries are. Yes. Now tell me about boundaries for you because <laughs> I know you're a very honest person and you do like to just have authentic, proper conversations and no bullshit. But when you are daily mail crack, you have to, which is hard. And I find it impossible. You have to hold stuff back because you mm. don't, you know, so I'm asking for myself. It's a tough one. <laughs> How do you do it? Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. Me. Yeah, me. Um, no, I, I've always, it, it's, it's a fine line, obviously being, the child of migrant parents being culturally still very Chinese, even though I sound nothing like it, there is this thing that we do, which is that you don't air your dirty laundry, you don't overshare with anyone outside of the family because 
privacy is highly valued. You know, mm. hum, you know, being humble mm. and being private are probably two of the characteristics that that Chinese families and, and and culturally Chinese people feel is important. And so I've always grown up that way. However, then you battle against this tell it like it is, mm. wanting to be the most real version of myself, which mm. is sometimes a chronic overshare and sometimes uh, a <laughs> Sometimes in the corner, of, like in the fetal position, not saying yeah, a word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's, there's, you know, there are many facets to all of us and, and it, it is our choice which facets we choose to, um, to share with the world and the people closest to us as well. Mm. And I think you just have to pick and choose your moments. There are times where I think real talk is important, especially when you have a, a weird job or a public job. There is an opportunity to normalise things we all go through that we don't speak about. I recently was um, listening to a friend talk about miscarriage mm. and we just don't talk about miscarriage and that is that is a terrible thing that happens to so many women. Mm. And I ha- I heard another friend say, "Wow, I wish I'd heard that before because she had had an experience like that in the past and had mm. felt so completely at sea and alone because she didn't feel like she had anyone who could uh, who she could talk to about it." So mm. there are themes in life that we don't discuss. Mental health is a big one for me. Um, anxiety is a big one. I know share and the more we talk about these things I think if I can if I can think of a net benefit for more than just myself Mm. then I'm happy to talk about it Mm. because I don't want people to feel alone there are there are lots of different things that plague us Mm. and if you feel less alone you feel a little bit more like you can you know own it so that's the good bit then the oversharing bit (laughs) that I don't share yeah I try not to share is the the private life stuff. Yeah. And then sometimes that gets forced out into the public. Don't know how I feel about that yet. Actually, I feel I say it, say how you feel, Melissa. I highly detest it. I highly (laughs) detest it. I don't like being forced into having to talk about things, but you and I both know that with the weird public job thing, Mm. if you get ahead of it by, by sharing it yourself, Mm then it takes away the currency of some tabloid media who thrive on muckraking and breaking okay. yeah. stories. I'm like, oh, she she wore athleisure and she went outside. Ooh. What was that? I mean, Ooh. for me, <laughs> Groundbreaking. For me, it's, it's the way they write about um, Star flaunts her body. Was she flaunting right. her body or she's just fucking walking down the street in clothes? She was just in her body. Was she just walking? So, yeah. Why is it when women... <laughs> are dare to be themselves out in a public space. They're flaunting. They're showing off, mm. you know. Men don't flaunt themselves apparently. And every time I see a headline making a news story out of someone flaunting a body mm. part, it's like, nah, she's oh, just. Oh, for me it's the subtle slut shaming that also oh, happens as well. Daring, I, yeah. I was gutted to not attend the Actor Awards this year because we won again, which I was know, awesome. Yay! <laughs> However, there was a really beautiful, beautiful girl. She was part of the the Bachelor franchise and she was wearing this gorgeous Vera Wang kind of, not a naked dress, but you know when they show the boning of the corset Oh, it's the white. I think it was Britney. Yeah. Yes, that's right. She looked amazing. amazing. Mm. And they posted the headline, which was leaves little to the imagination and I'm like, mm. she's wearing a floor-length gown, first of all. Mm. I mean, a little bit of decollete, but, like, she could be wearing whatever. Do, she, could, she, has her, okay. she has a right to wear whatever the mm. hell she wants. Mm. And she wore a gorgeous dress mm. by an amazingly talented designer, mm. and she rocked it. And could we not change the language that we use to describe a woman leaves little to the imagination says, Oh, she's wearing, she's not wearing enough clothing. She's a little bit. Oh, it's gross. Know, it's total. And it's like, no. Yeah. Who's imagination by the way, fuck off. And also what mm. they could have says, she just won podcast of the year in the people's choice. That's Awards. Right. Their podcast called life uncut. We got second mm. to them, which is amazing because they're so popular and successful. And I was standing on the shoulders of giants. So great. Um, <laughs> wow. But I wish I wish they would write about women's achievements and not, you know, how they look. Because yeah. often you'll see a bit before men's names, billionaire philanthropist or inventor or yeah. creator. Yeah. 
but it's always award winning award winning yes. podcaster award winning presenter there? you know rocks baller ass gown yeah. looking like a million bucks exactly I know it's, that's still yeah. you could mm-hmm. put many of those words in caps and I'm sure people would still click 100%. but it always has to be exposed and scathing and buries the hatchet and uh, I'm like why I know. Why, why do we? Why are we still doing this? And the the kicker is, many of these journalists are uh, women. women. <laughs> and that cuts me to the core. Yeah, but you know that's the it's the internalized misogyny of the industry. So straight white guys yes. in their fifties set the tone. They were the neutral. Okay, you know that, and you're a very smart woman who's got multiple degrees and worked in PR, and you know our neutral gaze is straight white guy. So for so long, I didn't, and I started watching like porn made by women for women. Mm. And then I was like, oh my God, there's a story. There's, it's about the feelings, not the like the, you know, things in holes. (laughs) And you start to realize when women are allowed to have their own point of view without the preset of the straight white male, it, it, it speaks to you on a whole different, and you, you, the blinders come off. So these women mm-hmm. who are writing these headlines are still having to hand into their editors who are probably men still, mm. and there just needs to be a shift, especially if you're a woman and you're writing about another, another woman, it is your responsibility to make it better for all of us. Yeah. And fuck the guy you're handing the edit yeah. into. It's, I yeah. throw down the gauntlet yeah. to those journalists that are working in that space rise through the ranks, Mm. embed yourself and change it because we, tabloid media exists for a reason. We love to hear about what people are doing, wearing, saying, relationships, all of that. I fully believe that you can have those conversations and they can still be a little bit gossipy and a little bit salacious, but they can also be written, you know, with more compassion mm. and and without the male gaze and without that male neutral gaze mm. and you can still have a successful publication that people will want to click and read i mm. fully believe it but it's about the subtlety for me i'm i'm a writer that's mm. what i do mm. the power of words the power of words mm. very important Oh, hundred percent. You are a writer. You're many things. I don't think everyone realizes how many strings you have to your boat. When am I going to be seeing a Melissa Leon piano? Performance. <laughs> because I'm seeing you in a gown by like a white baby grand. Ooh. Just I just think uh, the opening of Master Chef 2022 should be a musical number in which it's like the okay. spotlight, you, the piano, maybe the piano is spinning. I don't want to put ideas in people's heads. <laughs> and there's dry ice, dry ice, dry ice, doves, doves, swans, swans. <laughs> and then just you playing out like a beautiful version of hot and cold. I just oh. I, I feel like we need to see that side of you. I feel like we can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss performing? For many reasons. <laughs> no, but do you miss performing? Do you miss? I know you were very yeah. good. Yeah. I was I was when I was playing competitively. I was really good, but I was also a teenager. Yes. It was a very, very long time ago, and I, I do miss it. I am thinking of maybe getting a little electric piano situation at home and just practicing just for my just to play for myself because I think at this point in my life I just would like to return to piano just for myself yes but you know that do it do it no it hasn't you're not (laughs) dead you're only 40 this this is oh not even 40 although again tabloid media I've been 40 for about three years which is great for me in the long run I'm 39. Oh, that's right, because you were born in 82. Yeah, 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 I knew that. I knew that. 39. Yeah. Fine with being 40, by the way. Very excited about it all. I'm nearly 43. Again, like, you know, the the whole journalism thing, just a bit of a stickler for facts. I love it. Just just a little (laughs) bit. Just Google it and look. There was an article recently written. There was an article recently written, and it makes it sound like I read articles about myself all the time, which I do not. But there was a thing that said Melissa Leong, comma forty. I think that's blah, the blah, one blah. I last. And then, saw. and then Melissa yeah. Leong, comma thirty nine. I'm like, well, which is it? I saw I don't both. Know. Anyway, I read eighty two, mm. and then mm. I think the last thing I looked at was the forty headline, and mm. I'm not I'm dyslexic autistic and I've ADHD and I don't trust math so I was like fine just just hold off it for must a be few more months and at some point it will be true and that'll be great Eventually but anyway be 40 
It's fine, guys. I'll get there. Um, 40s ace. I've yes. never been happier. I have to tell you, I mean, I'm 43 in March. No, I highly recommend your 40s. Awesome. M. Rossiano with Melissa Leong for the M. Salation Summer Series. Okay. We're not getting away from this, okay. piano, this keyboard situation oh, okay. because <laughs> I was talking to Jamila and a few other people that I like I know are exhausted. But like, I feel like I'm crawling to the end of the year, by the way. Mm. Do you feel like you're, are you, have you got mm. end of year burnout? Are you like, oh. well, we just started back at work last week, oh, which is genius. Um, actually, because yeah. we just, we drip feed. We start, do a little bit, little bit, little bit, then we have a little bit of a break and then we start the next year with the, with the huge bank and it's mm. great because mm. we've already, we already sort of a little bit match fit so we're not Got going it. in cold. So it is it is really good but it has been an insane year for all of us. Mm. I'll, wear, I'll wear the fatigue. I am tired. Oh, me too, man. I am tired. I would like a little lie down, please. <laughs> I would love a holiday at some point. Can you read my Maybe. T-shirt? Oh, there's burnt out, but fucking lit. <laughs> I need that shirt. Mate, that is the story of my life. I'm a great star. I just, Ben Law, who I'm a massive fan of, yes. um, was wearing a hat and it said, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Perfect. And I, and I went, add to cart. <laughs> Same. I love that shit. I love being, able to, I've got another jumper that says therapy is cool. Like, cause yeah. honestly I wouldn't yes. be here without it. Yes. I love it. Correct. Same. But, but I was talking to her and a few others who are like us, exhausted um, women, working women. What do you do for fun, man? Oh, what do I do for fun? Cause no one had an I... answer. I just don't want you to feel bad about not having an answer. Sometimes I'll just sit at home by myself. <laughs> like that's really fun for me. In the quiet, I'm very lucky that my house is quite quiet. So it's really nice to just sit at home and just oh, babe, that's so see. tragic. <laughs> I know. Is that really sad? That's really sad. It's not sad. Um, it's relatable. I have some nice I have some nice art. Like I collect that is you know, I'm you know, just one by one whenever mm. I can like for me it's a mark of being an adult that I would like to save up money and mm. invest in art. Yeah. Just the odd piece here or there, but just to just to feel like I'm a bit more of a grown up. Mate, so you don't have I to apologise for yeah. investing in art. <laughs> fucking, I'm going to put all my money in art because I work hard because yeah. I earn a lot of money because yeah. I work fucking hard. Exactly. What that's, do still I do fun? Fun? that's still not fun. That's not fun. That's still not fun. Honestly, what do I do for fun? I listen to music mm. I clean the house oh, I love you that so is much fun for I me. love you same um and I call my friends yep and I that's, that's good the bit that's that okay when I have time when I have yep. the mental space to actually call a friend I'm mm. like that's I really you know that that to me is really fun but mm. also I went ice skating a few weeks ago Jesus Christ look out and I have not been ice skating since I was probably about 14 years yeah old. but you're good weren't you you're a good ice skater I did fall over because I was holding on to two little girls' hands and oh. one of them fell over and then we just like went down. Dominoes. Um, it was right. They're all like, let go, let go. I'm like, every boat, these are not my children. So the the responsibility oh, yes, side double. of me is like, do not let go of these children because you are responsible for them. So I didn't let go and then I was the one who fell over. So Captain's um, got to get out that of the was ship. Really, fun. That was so fun. Good. Really Great. fun. Good for you. So there you go. So you might be able to add ice skating to what I do. <laughs> are you the oldest child? I'm the eldest child. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. All the, all the, all the women are the <laughs> eldest daughters of immigrants. <laughs> we don't have hobbies. No. <laughs> no. Our mean, hobbies are done. achieving. Our hobbies yeah. are achieving, working yeah. very hard, showing up. My hobbies are sometimes hobbies. I start things and I buy all the yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, I, and then after two weeks I get bored. So uh, my roof is a graveyard of crafting supplies oh. and roller skates and, yeah, yeah. I am. I now know that's ADHD, hyper-focus issues, but mm. I've, my hobby, when everyone asks me that, I say my hobby is starting hobbies. That's yeah. that's Look, what I do. It's going to sound cliche, but I do really enjoy cooking. I do cook for fun. Do you if cook I for fun? If I have a dish in mind oh. that, I, that it's like in the back of my mind yeah. um, or I, I look at a piece of produce and I, and I think lamb shoulder, I know, what I, I know what I want to do with that. And then I need to go and make it. What do you do with and the lamb shoulder? Tell me, tell me, oh, tell okay. me. Okay, so this week yes, it I was. I love food talk. Yes. It was um, 
de- it was a boned out lamb shoulder. Mm. And what I did was mix white miso paste what? and yogurt, just plain green. I'm yogurt. writing it down. Yep, got Better. it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, make it into a paste and then rub it onto the lamb shoulder. I also added a, like a baharat, so a Middle yes. Eastern spice blend. Mm-hmm. Of, I think it had uh, fennel and cumin and cardamom and cinnamon. Oh, yes. A um, bunch of other different things in there. So basically spicy, salty yogurt oh. mix. Slather it all over this mm-hmm. piece of lamb. Stick it inside um, a, 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 a like a, a, a French oven. Yeah. You know, like a or you could put it in any kind of deep baking tray. Cover it in foil. I was going to say, can in I put it in? Oven, the, yeah, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Totally in the oven, one sixty five fan forced for about three hours. Oh, you until s- yes. You that you will smell it. It smells so good, and the the lamb fat starts to render out. The yogurt tenderizes the meat, and you end up getting this self sourcing Middle Eastern spiced collapsible lamb shoulder that you, that you can then just um, sort of sift out some of the oil because there's a lot of oil that comes out of it. Shred it, and then I made like a yogurt flatbread. Oh and gosh. so you just put the lamb on the yogurt flatbread with a bit of extra yogurt. I had some pomegranate. Um, I had a pomegranate in the fridge, tapped some of that over the top of it, and then just freshly chopped tomatoes, lemon juice, olive oil, salt, pepper. Oh, my God. That sounds so good. Oh, I'm going to make really that. Good. No, no, you've so made my mouth water. Slow cooking oh. on a Sunday especially, slow cooking on a weekend, Yeah, excellent, because you kind of do the prep, you throw it in and forget about it. You go and do things and yeah. you come back and the house smells amazing and then dinner is easy. Oh, my God. Yes. So that, I- that is why I will never be a good contestant on MasterChef is because I'm not about the quick cook, I'm about the slow cook Oh, and the no I, stress. I would never be a good contestant because I can't follow recipes. They asked me to do Celebrity MasterChef and I just said oh. I would just cry and be <gasps> drunk the whole time. No, you it should would have be, done it. It would have been hilarious. Can you imagine? I would just have cried, yeah. cried the whole time. I would well, be up, I, I'd, I'd be up in the gantry going, yes, you, I'd be a good hype <laughs> girl. I'm yeah. playing hype girl in the kitchen, but I can't. Awesome. I can't do the cooking. Can I pitch to you an idea that you do a Nigella Please. Lawson style? Oh, I love Nigella. Yes. No, I need you to do a Nigella Lawson style mm-hmm. cooking show because oh, you just describing. I would pay to watch you describe cooking food, legitimately. Okay. No, like in a not. You're so passionate about it, and you use your hands like an Italian woman, and can't stop. Yeah, me same, 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 same. When mm. I was in that dolly thing in the mask Singer and I couldn't use my hands, it was a fucking oh, nightmare. It was, oh God, it was that the was worst. Big. Was that a little bit claustrophobic? Yes. Just being in the yep. thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, you rocked it. It was amazing. The, thank you. The worst yeah. part was the hoods you have to wear, actually. They put like a cloth hood on your face when you don't have the mask oh. on and I hated that more oh. than the big head. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was fine. But, yeah, yeah no, I, I would. I think you would make an amazing Nigella-style cooking show. Just with Melissa, like you love cooking. You're a good cook. You've got so much knowledge. Thank You're an you. excellent TV presenter, very warm. You, like I just feel like why hasn't this happened? Can you Who make knows? this happen, please? Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see. <gasps> oh, that would be that time. would be. I feel like I'm just coming up. This is. We are about to start our third full season, and that we—that's not counting the wonderful things that were junior mm. and celebrity, oh, yeah. of which we yeah. sort of count as half seasons because yeah. they're a lot shorter. Mm. Um, I only feel like I'm just coming up for air now. Yes, you know that things have somewhat normalised and there's a, there's a bit of a rhythm going on and I sort of know what to expect. And the majority of this time we've obviously been in, in lockdown and, and COVID sort of life. So now is only feeling a little bit normal that I can think about all the other big projects I'd like to do yes. outside of it. So, mm. oh my goodness. yeah, there are things coming already. But like, bitch, shut up. I'm working big, on it. Just bitch, bitch, big... <laughs> Big projects like that. <laughs> you never know. Um, I, I'm a big believer in saying yes to opportunities Same. even if they scare you yeah. a lot because mm. that's how you learn. And mm. if at the very worst you learn something that you don't want to do again or mm-hmm. that you're not very good at or mm. whatever it happens to be, then at least you can set it aside and not wonder what you forget. Yeah, and I think that's so, my biggest fear is feeling like I might have missed out on something because I got in my own way. 
So I'm mm. the same as you. I've mm. said yes to, like, I went on Australian Idol having never sung in public and then I got a job at Breakfast Radio having never broadcasted and then I started yeah. stand-up comedy at 34 having never told a joke. Yep. My yep. whole career is based on me saying yes to things when I really probably factually should have said no. Well, most most people would say no, but then look at the life that you get to live and look at all the experiences that you've, that you've mm. chalked up so far mm. and they're, phenomenal experiences oh yeah so. good and bad as you know yeah. <laughs> Fuck. so <laughs> you seem very happy and content in life at the moment is that a fair summation fair summation yeah hard earned very oh, fuck hard yeah. earned babe but i feel yes. you i see you yeah it radiates i think every you. yeah thank you i mean i think every adult that reaches a certain age if you put in the work mm. You will get there. But the other thing to remember about happiness is that it is fleeting. So mm. if you just work on being content, I think there's contentment is far more sustainable mm. and that can take into account being really happy and being less happy. Mm. But being okay with who you are, that that's with you for life. So Oof. that's the best investment I've ever made in myself is getting good with who I am. Mm. Ugly bits, weird bits, yes. funny bits. Yes. You know, all yep. of it. That's so yeah. important. And I'm glad you said that for everyone listening. I mean, everyone knows I almost did that to the point where I pathologized myself. Like I was really going probably too hard on trying to mm. become this person that is balanced and doesn't, mm. you know, is is just whole and yeah. that's unattainable and mm. learning to be like, oh, actually life can be hard and good at the same time. Totally. That's that's totally. been the biggest thing for me is, yeah, being at peace with shit's going to be hard but it doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, I think that when you get, when you can accept that, mm. then all of a sudden you sort of exhale a little bit and it, you can have a bad day and still have it be all right, you know, yeah. because you know that you'll, you'll move on from it. Like my stupid mortification the other day, it was not a bad day. It's a weird day. And oh, an embarrassing day. No. But, <laughs> it indeed but you just kind of go, you know what? This is nah. this is part of who I am. And then mm. by being all right with it, showing a little bit of humor and vulnerability, you realize that everyone else around you is like, well, actually, I have this weird embarrassing thing too. And then people want to share with you. Yeah. And then suddenly you feel like you're in a much friendlier space. And you're in control of that. Yeah. We're all in control of it. So mm. yeah. You're right. Yeah. For me, it was letting go of trying to control people's perceptions of me. And when my therapist said that to me, it was like, I said to Lisa, I need a moment. I need a fucking moment. <laughs> it was like, what? She's like, yeah, you're exhausted because your whole life since you were little, you've been trying to control people's perceptions of you. Mm -hmm. And even to the point where I, like, because, you know, with my parents, especially wanting to like make them proud because they work so hard to put me through a private school education. And then, you know, right up to making sure my kids, when I die, remember me as a good mother. Like I, I even got to the point where I was wow. trying to control the legacy I left, like That's a lot. I was exhausted. <laughs> That's a lot. I know. Do you feel the need, especially considering you're Singaporean Chinese, mm -hmm. do you feel that you carry the expectations of people who look like you on your shoulders also? Like, do you feel that weight? I didn't think about that when I took on this job mm. at all. Mm. I was just a freelancer who said yes to a, a wonderful opportunity to learn and to grow and to experience something new. So I just, I said yes to that yeah. part of it. Mm. As I continued on and I received feedback from people about how they felt about me being there, that's when I started to realise that it meant something to people who look like me, people mm -hmm. who don't look like me, mm -hmm. but who don't feel seen yet, mm -hmm. lots of different people. And it means, it means the world to me to hear that. It does come with a sense of responsibility mm. that I need to continue to do the best job I can possibly do, that I need to carry myself um, in a way that they can find respect and pride in. There is definitely that. But at the end of the day, I still come back down to I can, I can only be me yeah. um, and carry myself through this world in the best possible way. I'm going to do stupid things. Yes, of course. And I want you to. Say stupid things. Good. Um, 
this is this is just that this is humanity mm. and i was having a conversation with with briggs actually yeah um who we we chat a lot and we were talking about cancel culture versus accountability culture yeah with specific people in mind and specific situations that have that have happened in mind mm. and the danger you know we sort of both agreed that the danger comes in with, with, with cancel culture is that people don't have the opportunity to redeem themselves. Yeah, there's no growth. When, when we deserve to show our evolution. Mm. The other thing as well is that if you cancel someone for doing something that's perceived as being bad, they don't necessarily sometimes learn either. Mm. Mm. So cancel culture I think needs to get in the bin. And yeah. And accountability culture is where you come into being able to have a much more constructive, intelligent conversation because if you did something silly, wrong, dumb, whatever, you should be allowed to apologise for it. You should be allowed to demonstrate your growth mm. and, you know, your your remorse mm. and to be able to emerge from that a better, more whole person who can contribute something positive in the future. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm a big believer in calling in. I before calling out needs to happen. And I've done that in probably the last year, slid into a few people's either text messages and DMs, people I know, yeah. and just said, hey, let's talk about what you just put up then. You know, yeah. let's let's discuss it. Let's have a yeah. conversation. If the person doesn't want to change and says something offensive back, then fuck, let them go. Let them go yeah. and destroy themselves. But yeah. I'm this, I like to give people an opportunity, but I think you need to call in first before you do yeah. the public fight. It's a very, it's a very caring thing to do because you're allowing people to save face and consider their actions and change them before it becomes a much bigger thing. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah. Do you I think, think cancel culture exists? Really- really though Mel like I think about it and like people bounce back awful mm-hmm. people well they have to they have awful to awful people was... bounce back like people who had criminal records or people like Christian Porter or Pauline Hans like like I don't I don't know that it even exists to mm. be honest I question mm. the existence of it because who's really been cancelled forever no exactly I think it's not forever it's sort of a giant the weird purgatory yeah it's like yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. they and then they seem to also gather that, like, galvanise a crew that really agrees with them. You know, yeah. Like yeah. Sam Frost, for instance, when she gave the speech about not wanting to get vaccinated, yeah. she was cancelled perhaps by people who are pro-vaccination and mm. but she was still galvanised by thousands of... yeah. resonated so it's, with her. Yeah. Mm, it's, I mean, it's, for, every, for every opinion, good or bad, there, there will be other people who who yeah. agree with you always. so yeah, yeah true. there's there's always that but mm. yeah I just think in, in terms of you know the public side of things compassion is and nuanced underrated. conversations too yeah the internet yeah. doesn't allow for nuance we'll move on we'll have a sip of our tea what are you looking forward to Melissa Leung like legit Ooh. like what is lighting you up and be be like messy and honest with this answer okay I honestly am looking forward to, I know that we're not very good at this whole work-life balance thing, but I am looking forward to just having a little bit more of a a life outside of work for the first time in many years. Yeah. You know, the last few years have been all about grafting and pushing and working really hard. And it is, it's, I love it. Mm. We love it. We love it. Yeah, we do. We love (laughs) achieving and we love putting ourselves forward for new opportunities and all of the rest of it. But Mm. it's also come at the detriment of, you know, Mm. not having so much balance going on. And Mm. for the first time in my life, I'm in a, in a role that I love that I can see the edges of Mm. a little bit and so I can sort of see how my life fits around work because I I have accepted long ago that work is the central Ah. part of me same for passion don't apologize ever as women they're made to feel like that's not okay yeah a sense of a sense of purpose loving what you do yes I that is the core of that is the core of who I am I'm good with that but you do need to have mm. things around that yeah. that complement it and give you light and shade. It's all about that little bit of balance. You know, balance is something that constantly changes. Yeah. But it's okay. Like you should. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Yeah. So no. yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm looking forward to having a bit more of a 
you know, a balance in, in that regard and having a, a life outside of work um, that I, I love doing, whether or not that's ice skating or making piano. school lunches or piano or I'm gonna send whatever you, it happens to be. <laughs> I'm sending you a keyboard for Christmas. No, <laughs> I am sending you a keyboard for Christmas. Bring on my list. Oh, my goodness. Put it on the list. Do you have, oh, do you have yeah. lists? Do you have constant lists going everywhere, yeah. like in your phone, on in my, your notes? On my phone. Notes? I have con- constant yeah. notes. I just Same. am always writing notes of things. Same. Same. That's grocery list oh, yeah, or everything. I have a list of dietaries, like everybody that I encounter <laughs> that ever mentions that they have a dietary restriction or an allergy or something goes into my list. So that because years ago, I remember one time I had a really good friend of mine had a developed a sudden nightshade allergy. <gasps> and I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll go to dinner and we'll I'll book this brand new restaurant that's amazing. Well, it was a Chinese restaurant, oh, modern Chinese restaurant. Everything's and got nightshade. Night is yeah, the everything's everything. everything. <laughs> and so I was mortified because I'm like, here is my lovely friend that I haven't seen. I'm meeting his girlfriend for the first time, and I have forgotten that he has a nightshade. Allergy. <laughs> you have a have dietary list. I know. And so now I have a dietary list of all of the things that my friends like and don't like, or not even friends, like people that I encounter. I also write lists of, um, of Potent, like crew that I work with yeah. and what their coffee orders are oh, so I that I don't that. have to ask them. People because, appreciate that shit. Your yeah. crew would love you. Yeah, you just sort of, you just, you just need to know what they drink because if you're working in the morning and it's really, really full on, just being able to turn up with the coffee that you know that they like or the tea that you know that they like, that's, it's, it's a small thing. So yeah. though a list for that, list of movies and books that, and podcasts yeah. that I would like to watch, read, spend time with. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, lots of different things. Places I would like to travel. Instagram um, archive is really good for that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So places I would like to go, travel stories I would like to pitch at some point when we can. I love that. In a greater capacity. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of lists. Lists. I love a list. I'm striking the Nigella idea. You just need to be like Gwyneth and do goop. You need to do a Ooh. Melissa Leung's goop. Ooh, That's what needs okay. to happen. You that have sounds so, gross. No, but <laughs> you have so many great ideas and you're a great curator. You, you're oh, one of life's, you. like I see you as a, as a curator of, of and a purveyor of life. Like it's not just food. You love fashion and music yeah. and culture we and love art. Fashion. Yeah, we do. I mean, <laughs> I'm the same. I see myself as a curator and an amplifier. Yeah. Like that's that's what I love to yeah. do. But and but, a connector. I yeah, think I like as well. I like connecting. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, you're a fucking pleasure. I knew. <laughs> I, I'm glad people got get to hear and see this side of you. It was very important to me. I feel. So yeah, sometimes you have to put on your armor and present yourself a certain way in the totally. media. Totally. And yeah. I knew there was this side to you um i'm gluten-free by the way so just okay, pop that on right. your list put it, put it yeah. in list. okay yeah. great good the fact that you have a list of people's dietaries in your phone is the most on-brand yeah. thing to you and it, it yeah. it's that's how we're going out that's what we're going allergies out allergies and dietaries it's in, it's important here we go thank you very See? much for being on the pod <laughs> oh my god i mean um you're a very busy woman and i appreciate your time immensely i know time so- is yeah. So are you, and, and I really appreciate being asked because that's the thing is people assume you're busy, and we are, yeah. but also we will take the time to do yeah. the things that we want to do, and it's nice to have the choice to. You are a brilliant human being, and I know that we, we you know, we, we've we made plans to catch up and then one of us, one of us will cancel or I'll cancel. Um, and but you get it. You understand why. Totally get it. And it doesn't. And it doesn't actually nah. detract from our connection at all, which I think nah. is awesome. It doesn't. Well, I yeah. don't have many friends in the industry, so mm. because the the way I am, um, and the way people are in general in the industry. So it's nice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So thank you. And like, I even gave yeah. you the out last night. I texted you at 10, like, I'm going to give her the out. I'm going to give her no. the out in case she needs it. No, but no. I understand what comes yeah. with it all. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, darling. This has been a joy. Thank you for having me. No worries. This is Emsolation. 
Hey, how you going? It's Benjamin Wosley here again, the executive producer of Emsolation. Do I need to say that anymore? You get the vibe. I'm stepping in just to give Em a bit of a break. Uh, she's done all the conversations. I just need to come in and uh, wrap things up for her so she doesn't have to sit in front of a microphone for a few weeks. Of course, you've just enjoyed her conversation with Melissa Leong from MasterChef. How incredible was that conversation? There are more to come. Next Thursday, she'll sit down with Aussie actress Virginia Gay, who's famous for shows like uh, All Saints and Winners and Losers. That is another incredible, uh, life-changing conversation. And then the following week, Jamila Rivesby will do much the same again, deliver a life-changing conversation. I know, each week you're getting these for free and they are such incredible uh, chit chats. So do not miss out. If you get the chance to, make sure you go and uh, give us a rating on Spotify. You just hit the three dots on the bio page of Emsolation with M. Rossiano and it'll come up with rate this show and you can rate it a five or you can ignore that and do whatever you like. It's entirely up to you. In the meantime though, uh, have a wonderful day and we'll chat with you again next Thursday. Emsolation with M. Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn at Entente Music. With videos by Liam O'Brien. Socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow. With assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts. Plus occasional technical wizardry, wine, and coffee from M's dad, Vincent. Get more Emsolation by following the Emsolation podcast on Instagram, where you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can join other Emsolators at the Emsolation group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. If you love what we do, share this podcast with a friend and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app. Thanks for taking time out to listen to this week's episode and we look forward to chatting with you again soon. <laughs>